So uh, we've got Warwick Johnston here, Managing Director of SunWiz uh, with another podcast. Um, today we've got a really interesting um, presenter to speak to, uh, Dean Mannix, um, is uh, I think Australia's best solo sales coach. So say quick g'day, Dean, and give us a wave. Hi guys, good to meet you and uh, thanks for the prompt. <laughs> yeah, Warwick, yeah, cool. appreciate it. All right. Now, um, before we throw to Dean uh, and hear all about how to sell quality um, when uh, your customers are demanding is cheap. Um, we are going to give you a quick little market update. So let me jump into that right now. I'll quickly just share my screen actually so you can see what I'm seeing. Now, was, there we go, you should be able to see that now. So what's interesting, I guess, about the market at the moment is, you know, there's a little bit of fall from the previous month, but the key thing that we see here is that Basically, you've got a, a stable market that's just reached a plateau. You could almost draw a line through the middle of that chart and uh, that's be our average monthly volume. So, hey, you know, we've reached a plateau at a record volumes. Um, hasn't gone uh, anything much higher than that in recent months, part of which has been due to Victoria. So let's come and have a look at what's happening in, uh, on a state-by-state -state basis. This uh, pink line here is uh, the Victorian market. Um, you can see it, it grew um, in uh, August figures. Um, wasn't Certainly wasn't up to its previous heights, but um, certainly some helpful growth. And if you look at the month-to-month -month figures, it was 13% growth. So um, still got a fair way to go there represents 18% of the Australian market. Um, and look, you know, were it not for falls in New South Wales and, and Queensland, um, nationally we would have seen another record um, month. Um, but essentially these falls in Queensland and, and New South Wales um, are predominantly due to the oscillations in commercial volume. And you know, commercial tends to oscillate quite significantly from a month to month basis. So that's that's the, um, the snapshot of the market. Now, we've also released some interesting um, new services and i'm going to jump into uh, this new benchmarking thing that we're uh, providing um, helping solar retailers understand where they sit um, on price um, versus their competition and also on, on volume and scale so um, here we have a chart of um, uh, a individual solar company and i'm not going to reveal who they are um, but uh, they're, they're in blue and they're compared to all other companies that are uh, using uh, our software um, in terms of where they sit by price um, across a range of different sizes. So, you know, residential, they're pretty much bang on the market in terms of post subsidy pricing and pre subsidy pricing. Um, but when you look at some of their commercial systems, they're, they're quite a lot um, uh, cheaper. So, uh, interesting to see that in an average sense, but it's also you can go and see that in a distribution sense. So, you can go and compare um, uh, their company and see on residential, yeah, on average they are higher, but, you know, basically all the time they're higher. On commercial, uh, when you're starting to get to see some commercial prices, they're consistently lower than um, most of the prices. And these are box plots. We can explain those to you another time if you want to become a customer. Um, but uh, you know, they show a distribution um, in the um, interquartile range is that um, box plot. And we can even show how people's system pricing varies on a brand specific basis. So, a whole lot of useful information there. This is a uh, dovetails into some of the, a service that we're providing um, called Market View. And some really interesting uh, things are coming out of this. Um, what we see is that historically, the Australian market, you know, in 2013 was only 51% Bloomberg Tier 1. Um, by the end of 2017, it got to 80%, so there's not really any data after that. We've now come and analysed our data and uh, can show you a part of an excerpt of a new service um, that shows basically that uh, amongst Tier 1 and Super Premium, all that's left if you're not tier one is 7% of the market. So uh, we now reach 93% of the market being a, a reasonable quality, um, though it's still a far away from being um, top rate, if you like. Um, and you can see that broken down by uh, individual manufacturers. I'm not going to re reveal who they are just here, but um, uh, if you want to see that, you can. This chart actually shows a, a difference of that market share by resi versus commercial. And what you can see is the, um, the, the large manufacturers in that tier one segment, that's those green lines, actually get more and more market share as you get to uh, more and more sophisticated buyers. Um, but interestingly, the, the super, super premium um, uh, panels don't drop away um, as you get larger in the size necessarily. Um, there's some other charts there I won't go into. But uh, again, I just wanted to show you a, good example of pricing um, and how much it can range um, from one company to the next. That, that's varying with different inverted brands. But this is what the chart I wanted to show you. 
for a, a, a um, for you know, top grade uh, panel there, you know, you've got a pricing range that uh, reaches between a dollar sixty per watt up to two dollars twenty per watt, and you know, at that bottom end of that pricing, um, you know, that's effectively you know near the top end of a uh, Canadian Solar Sun Tech Trina pricing. These aren't actually top ends; these are actually medians and so the median uh, upper and lower quartile so basically you can see that people are can, um, don't have to compete on price there are some people doing some really interesting um, you know uh, premium pricing there and uh, getting sales um, and there's some heavy discounts on those uh, but there's a whole range of strategies out there so uh, with that I'm going to dive in to chat again with Dean uh, Dean Mannix, uh, I've been presenting alongside for many years at some of the Supplier Partners uh, Roadshow events, and I've been really impressed with how he's uh, taken his expertise, which is being an incredible gifted salesperson, come um, sales coach, and then apply that to solar sales, which is a really specific um, thing that you've got to do there because you're selling, um, you know, so many different aspects, uh, you know, bills savings, environmental benefits, potentially uh, long-term benefits, quality, all this sort of stuff. So um, I've been really impressed with how Dean's picked that up and I'm really pleased to, to have him uh, here with me today. G'day, Dean. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I like the surfboard in the background there, there mate. Is that, uh, <laughs> well, it, I live on the Gold Coast now. <laughs> is, 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 is it wet? Is it a sign that you've been out surfing or is it just kind of... It's, uh, it's not wet right now. I was on the bike today, but uh, every day's got an activity on the Gold Coast. It's fantastic. Cool. Um, do you want to give us a little bit about, about your background for those of us who um, haven't been to one of your, your roadshow events? Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, I've been consulting in sales uh, and sales performance for the last 22 years, um, more than 25 countries around the world for the, the biggest companies in the world. So, you know, companies like Oracle in technology, Canon in um, copiers and printers, Goldman Sachs in banking. But I fell into the solar um, industry around about five years ago and I was asked by a friend to help him solve a few sales problems and, and I guess became fascinated with the industry because there's so many people doing so many good things but there's also it's the wild wild west there are so many dodgy crappy operators out there getting away with putting you know two-year solutions onto you know a 25-year roof and it frustrated the hell out of me so you know I got involved and I'm loving speaking at conferences and working in the space. Oh, great. And uh, look, uh, number one complaint I hear from solar businesses out there is that um, it's a race to the bottom. You're competing against uh, price and price alone. Um, and, you know, I hear that over and over again. And, and yet there are some businesses out there that are doing exceptionally well and have got really healthy profit margins. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like chalk and cheese. And so there's a lot of companies in the middle there that aren't deliberately going out to be um, the bottom end but finding you know, that's all they can do just to keep the wheels turning. Um, what do you do in those circumstances? Yeah, look, I think the data that you shared is absolutely amazing. Um, and, and people should be, I'm giving you a plug here, you didn't ask me to previously, but people should be paying for that data because it's data like that that enables you to convince yourself and or convince your sales team that there is more margin to be gained. And I think what most small operators forget is is that a 10 to 11% improvement in your margin generally generates a, a 25 to 40% improvement in your profitability. You know, yeah, people exactly. forget that. And, and so it is definitely a race to the bottom if you've got a price seller versus a price seller, right? So if I'm selling on price and you're selling on price and that's the only dynamic we've created with the, the end consumer, whether that be a commercial, you know, commercial operator or a, a homeowner, then it is a race to the bottom. But that's why smart business people and smart solar professionals need to start going, no, I'm not going to play the price game. I'm going to become an expert at selling quality. And a huge part of this is selling people out and away from price. So out okay. of and away from price. You've got to get people concerned about buying the cheapest solution. Okay, so why are, in your mind, customers buying cheap? And, and why are solar salespeople failing to be able to sell um, something else than cheap? Sure. Look, if you're watching this show, it's super obvious to you that a solar system's not a solar system, you know. And and even in the you know, so we attribute a lot more intelligence often to the commercial buyer than the resi buyer. But the simple reality is, from a commercial business owner's perspective, a solar system surely is a solar system. Like the panels all look the same, um, the numbers pretty much look the same. So why should I bother comparing? And so there's a couple of things, right? There's people that don't even know they should compare. There's people that don't know what they should compare. 
There's people that kind of know what they should compare but don't know how to compare. As an example, I've got a tier one panel, you've got a tier one panel. Okay, they're all tier one panels, aren't they? So people don't know how to compare one with the other. And so when those things are going on, people default to what's easy. And the easiest thing to compare is, Warwick, hit the punchline. What's the easiest Price. thing to compare? Price. Yeah, right. But I think so, one, of the, one of the issues potentially there is, um, again, because you and I come from the solar industry, I've been reviewing some websites recently and, uh, and helping them to improve. And you can just see how many solar business people are going like, oh, I'll give somebody lots of technical details and that'll help them decide. And it's like, as a customer, I, that, I'm just confused, right? And I can't tell the difference between one price and another. Right? Yep. confused person does one of two things and neither of those are by quality. The confused person either opts out, goes, this is too hard and doesn't buy anything or they default back to, well, what's easiest to compare and what confuses me the least price versus price. Yeah. And so if there's a real art between guiding the customer on their buying journey and making them care about quality and at the same time, not overwhelming them. Any um, good uh, ways of doing that? I've seen, for example, when you're, um, uh, helping you know, Phono Solar uh, stand out. It's like pointing to independent uh, endorsements and, and those sorts of things as being ways of doing so. You got any tips uh, around how to make customers care? Absolutely. So, so the bottom line is the first thing is we will do a lot more to avoid a problem or run away from pain than we will to move towards a benefit or gain a better solution. So people are much more emotionally impacted by problems and issues and challenges. So rather than focusing all of your energy selling your quality and all the technology behind it and the warranties and everything that's fantastic, you're actually better off having a conversation with the customer around why they shouldn't be buying cheap and getting them to commit to the fact that cheap is not an option. So spending a bit more time in that space will, will cause people to say, okay, I no longer want to buy cheap and the beauty of that is You've just blown up those cheap and nasty operators that are here today, gone tomorrow, and put you know a solution that needs to last 20 to 25 years and at least five to seven to pay itself off, and then they bugger off and you know Phoenix themselves build a new company, whatever it might be. But you want to destroy their platform first. And I know that sounds negative and aggressive, but it's the customer that's decided they don't want that that then defaults to buying quality. So that's the dynamic of the conversation you have to have with them, and it needs to be in that order. Yeah, look, and also in a way that they can relate to. So, for example, sometimes I suggest to companies, have a conversation about, well, customer, what car do you drive? You know, is it something that, you know, you, you, a luxury premium end? Is it something that just gets you from A to B and, you know, is, is, is practically unsafe? Um, or is, is it something in between? And you'll find that most people are, you know, <laughs> avoiding the, the cheapest car they can buy, right? Um, yeah, so that's a so, very high-risk question if you haven't seen their car. So right. if you say, car do you buy? And they went, the Suzuki, you know, whatever it might be, you're yep. in trouble. So if there's a BMW in the garage, ask them, listen, why did you pay up for the BMW instead of buying a cheaper car? Um, but generally, you're better off actually because, it's, think, because this thing's going to sit on their house or on their property, ask, try to compare to things that are linked to the house or the commercial property. So as an example, if I'm at a business owner's place of business and they spend a lot of money on signage or gardens or whatever, just say, listen, is there a reason you've spent a lot of money on the garden or you've spent a lot of money on high quality signage, why did you spend the extra dollars on that? And, and take them through the process of, of, of already made expensive, quality purchasing decisions in relation to this thing that you're going to impact. If you're with a homeowner, these are really nice tiles. That's a beautiful kitchen bench top. Um, you know, why did you choose to go for the marble instead of the laminate? Well, I wanted it to last longer. It looked better. Look, solar is no different. Mm, yeah, solar is no different. But the good news is the price difference between quality in solar and cheap is not as big as the price difference between the marble that you purchased and the laminate that you could have. That's a really great way of quite simplifying it and getting it understandable in their terms, but also psychologically linking um, them to things that they can, um, they can relate to. And, and then that changes their mindset on how to buy them. Hey, look, mate, yeah. um, we could talk uh, on this topic for, for hours, right? Um, and Absolutely. actually that's, some, that's something that uh, you, you can do for people, right? Um, yeah, uh, sure. I'm, 
I'm really uh, proud and excited that uh, people, uh, solar sales people around the country can now teach themselves on, on how to sell <laughs> quality and, and not just price um, and do so from the comfort of their, their office, wherever that is, um, whenever they want and how, however often they want because this thing takes rep, rep, repetition and, and practice, right? So Absolutely. can you tell us, um, tell us a little bit more? More about that um, offer you bring to market. Yeah, I'm excited. We put together a whole, you know, a whole bunch of great content and strategies and ideas, and actually linked it into using the PV Cell documentation because I thought that was the easiest way to systemize selling quality versus price. And so we videoed all of that. We've broken it up into chapters, and any anybody in the solar industry can now access that content. Um, it's about an hour and a half of content, strategies, ideas, questions, etc. Um, through our website uh, and accessing basically the, the program's called Conversations to Customers because the one thing I really want for everybody listening is don't go out and have lots of conversations. Those conversations have to turn into customers and importantly, profitable customers. So that's all available online now and uh, depending on whether you want it for yourself or the team, you can access it um, at different price points. Yeah, it looks fantastic. And uh, from what I see, they're incredibly affordable price points. <laughs> they're the kind of you know no-brainers from a return on investment you know if you can deliver uh, one sale that's more profitable then um you know wow you, you, you've made your money so look um I, yeah. I i'd love to see many businesses successful as a result of this and um i'm, I'm sure that there's there's even more to come from you, you, you dean is, is that right oh, there's plenty there's plenty built up and plenty coming <laughs> Yeah, cool. Uh, not going anywhere. So look, um, uh, we're also going to be uh, uh, assisting businesses with improving their profitability in a whole range of different ways that's coming out over the coming months. Um, but uh, sales is a critical fundamental <laughs> one. And um, yeah, yeah, we're thrilled that um, you, you've, you've been with us, Dean. Thanks very much for sharing all that with us. Uh, I'll post uh, at the bottom of this um, uh, video uh, a link that you can directly access uh, that content. And um, yeah, uh, happy selling. Hey, Dean, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, have a fantastic day. Absolute pleasure. Make sure you're selling quality. Make sure you're beating price.